फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन जीरो प्लस फाइव सेकेंड्स We launch things into space by putting them on rockets with enough fuel called propellant to boost them above most of the earth's atmosphere. Once the rocket reaches the right distance from the earth, it releases the satellite or the spacecraft. About 300 years ago, a scientist named Isaac Newton stated three basic laws that describe the way things move. One such law says that for every action, there is an opposite and an equal reaction. This is the most important idea for how rockets move. If you'll see the pictures or the videos of the launch, you'll see exhaust streaming out in the bottom of the rocket. Exhaust is the flame, hot gases or smoke burning out from the rocket's propellant. The exhaust pushes out of a rocket's engine down towards the ground. That's the action force. In response, the rocket begins moving in the opposite direction, lifting off the ground. That's the reaction force. Will it keep going? It's not that simple. The Earth's gravity is still pulling it down. When the rocket burns propellants and pushes out exhaust, that creates an upward force called thrust. To launch, the rocket must need enough propellants and exhaust so that the thrust of the rocket, pushing the rocket up, should be greater than the force of gravity pulling it down. The rocket needs to speed up up to at least 17,800 miles per hour and fly above the most of the atmosphere in a curved path around Earth. This ensures that it won't be pulled back down to the ground. But what happens next is different depending on where you want to go. Let's say you want to launch a satellite that orbits Earth. The rocket will launch and when it gets to a specific distance from Earth, it will release the satellite. The satellite stays in orbit because it still has momentum, energy it picked from the rocket, pulling it in one direction. Earth's gravity pulls it in another direction. This balance between gravity and momentum keeps the satellite orbiting around the Earth. The International Space Station orbits at a speed of 250 miles above the Earth. It travels at a speed of 17,150 miles per hour. Tracking and data relay satellites orbit at a height of 22,000 miles and travel much slower, about 6,700 miles per hour to maintain their high orbit. If you are trying to get another planet, you need a fast-moving rocket to overcome Earth's gravity. To do that, you have to speed up to around 25,000 meters per hour. You also need to figure out the best time to leave the Earth to get to that planet or moon. Here we are talking about Chandrayaan, which needs to land on the moon. At Perigee, the point at which the moon gets closer to the Earth, the distance is approximately 3,60,000 kilometers. This time is best to go on the moon, as it requires less amount of propellant and time to get there. Once the spacecraft reaches the moon's orbit, it gets attracted to it due to its gravity, but the propellant tries to fly it away from the moon. The relative velocity of the spacecraft should be such that there is a balance between the momentum of the spacecraft and the gravitational force of the moon. The spacecraft revolves around the moon as it did on Earth. Then with a very precise and calculated acceleration, it enters the moon's atmosphere to make a soft landing on the moon's surface. The space star then captures images, data and relevant information about the moon and sends it back to Earth. For making the rocket, we have taken two G and pipes of one two inch diameter and two feet long and one J pipe of four inch diameter and four feet long. Two empty plastic bottles of vinegar, chili sauce or soya and one bottle of 2 liter mask. Cut them, fix them with fabric quick on the pipes and paint them. Tada! Our racket is ready!